Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 91 of my brand new comics haul series where I show you guys every book that I picked up from my local comic shop every new comic book day and I tell you everything you need to know about every single issue. So this week a pretty tame week as compared to like last week we had like five different number ones, right? Not too many huge releases, we just got some tie-ins for some events and stuff. I got uh, three Marvel issues and three single issues from Image as well as a collection that I'll show at the end. So let's just get right into it. First of all, my most anticipated issue of the week. This is from Marvel Comics. This is uh, uh, Mary Jane and Black Cat, number one. It has the Dark Web tie-in signed here, but this is actually just a five-issue miniseries where only the first couple issues, or maybe the first three, are actually tying into the Dark Web event. To be honest, to talk about Dark Web for a second, I'm really not liking that so far. I've heard some mixed things about it from other people. I think a lot of people are enjoying that event. For me, it just, like, the, with these first few issues that we've had so far, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man tie-ins, as well as that first, like, one-shot issue that started it all, I just feel like there's not enough going on. Like, all we have is Venom being, like, mind-possessed, by uh, Chasm and uh, Madeline Pryor, right? That's like the whole plot. That's pretty much all that's going on. And their takeover of New York City, it just kind of feels like there's not enough different plot threads going on. Um, and it's very like simply written and just heroes fighting each other. I don't really know about it so far, but we do have this tie-in series. This is written by Jed McKay. Uh, cool cover there by J. Scott Campbell. But let's look at some interior artwork. So this is definitely set during like Christmas time, you know, the holiday season. So we've got snow in the background. And this is Jed McKay doing everything he can to continue his Black Cat run um, across a bunch of different titles, right? He's had a couple different Black Cat ongoing series. I never bought any of them, but I read some issues here and there. Um, and I think that was kind of like a cult favorite for a lot of people. So uh, he had that Iron Cat series that just wrapped up, and now there's this one. Plus he wrote that uh, Mary Jane and Black Cat like tie into the whole Beyond thing a few months ago. So we'll see about this. I'm definitely excited to see what Jed McKay can do with these characters, and maybe we'll get a little bit more info about what Mary Jane's whole deal has been with her kids and everything. We'll see about that. That's Mary Jane and Black Cat number one. But moving on with Marvel Comics, this is another pretty big release, although not many people know too much about it, I don't think. This is Avengers Forever issue number 12, and if you read the tag at the top here, it's Avengers Assemble Part 3. So I recently got caught up online with all the uh, Jason Aaron Avengers stuff. I read like the majority of his run, but then dropped Avengers and the companion title Avengers Forever. Um, I want to say like maybe around a year ago. So I got all caught up and it's all been build up throughout his entire run, but especially over the last year or so, excuse me, across his two Avengers titles. Um, to this big event, Avengers Assemble, that's the end of his run. So you can just see like the madness that's going on in here with all these different versions of Captain America uh, from across the multiverse assembled. And basically the plot so far is that they're assembling um, against Mephisto. He's kind of the main villain behind all this. He's made his Council of Red where he uh, collects different Mephistos from all across the multiverse to team up. They're trying to take down the Avengers by wiping them out at the beginning of history. So basically Mephisto and this other supervillain team, the Multiversal Masters of Evil, have been like teaming up and going to the beginning of time, you know, like the 1 million BC Avengers of every single multiverse world and killing those Avengers before they can progress in history. Don't know if I'm explaining it quite right, but the build up to this has been insane. Um, it's just really big and bombastic and it's pretty much like the biggest multiverse story you could possibly tell. So really good artwork in here by Aaron Cooter also. I'm looking forward to seeing how this event pans out. It's a crossover between Avengers um, and this Avengers Forever title. And it all kicked off in that Avengers Assemble Alpha issue. So I do recommend this, but I will say, dumping into this event isn't really friendly for new readers. There's a lot going on. So I just recommend reading Jason Aaron's whole uh, runs on both of these so far. I know I talked a lot about that, but I'm really excited about this event. It's going to be 10 issues in total. This is part 3. It's Avengers Forever number 12. The last issue that I picked up from Marvel, though, this week, this one is Alien number 4. Awesome cover there by uh, Bjorn Behrens. I heard that he, like, sculpts clay, like, figures of the, you know, drawings that he's going to make and then, like, paints over them. Something crazy like that. He's got some special process. Um, and Alien, I don't know, this is kind of a weak series in my opinion so far. I'll probably drop this one after this first arc, uh, depending if they even keep on going with it or if they relaunch again or whatever the deal might be. Um, I think I just might be a little bit burnt out on Alien stuff. I know that people that like grew up with Alien stuff, this might really be their type of thing. I've watched the first couple movies, but to be honest, um, I'm just kind of losing interest, I'm not sure. But this new story arc, I do like the artwork a lot more than that past Alien series. It's the same writer, though. Uh, and we've got this team of synths, these like... Um, Android, like, you know, bi bionically, like, arranged people um, that look real but aren't, and they have been tasked with, like, exploring this planet that was taken over by the aliens. Turns out there's actual humans that are living on it still. So pretty simple plot so far. I mean, it's okay. I'll definitely ride through this arc and see what happens. That's Alien number four. 
Moving on to Image Comics, I've got three single issues from them. Uh, this first one is a pretty big release. This is Vanish number four. We've got a nice cardstock cover here, plus your amount of pages you're supposed to get. You can't stress enough how good Image is with the quality. Um, not sure what's going on in the cover there, but not sure who this character is. Uh, Vanish has been okay so far in my opinion. I really liked issue two specifically, I remember. I thought that was really good. Donny Cates, I feel like doesn't get enough credit for like how well he does with character building, just interactions between characters and dialogue and stuff, which there was a lot of in issue number two. It was kind of a breather issue, right? But then number three, I really didn't like because it was like a fully action-packed issue. It kind of felt like you read it in a second. Didn't seem like it was worth the money. So definitely kind of on and off with this series so far, just in my opinion. But um, the premise is that there's this character, Oliver, who's our main character. Um, he used to be part of this magic school, which you can see all the students of it here. Um, that's like in this different dimension, right? So they kind of kept magic a secret from people who didn't use it. A lot like Harry Potter, a lot like Strange Academy, kind of. Uh, but uh, all of those students were, um, you know, like sent back home after this big catastrophe from the villain who's called Vanish, who like, you know, went after the school. Now Oliver has grown up and uh, the henchmen of that villain have come back to Earth. They're posing as superheroes. So now... He's going around and killing all of them, and although he's the hero behind the scenes, he seems like the villain to the public. So that's just a simple explanation of it. There's a little bit more going on in this series. I will say the artwork by Ryan Stegman obviously does make this pretty worth it. They're one of the best creative teams in comics after their Venom run. Uh, did I show any artwork yet? <laughs> and I'll be curious to see where the series goes. Not sure how long they're planning on going with it. Um... And I'm surprised they've been putting out this many issues in a row. I know that that team usually has a lot of problem with like delays and stuff based on their Venom run and based on the King and Black run. Here's another page here. So definitely good artwork. Not so sure about the story so far, but um, curious to see where this goes. That's Vanish, issue number four. Next up from Image, though, we've got, I think all three, I'm noticing, all three of the issues that I got from Image this week are all cardstock covers. That just shows how good they are with their quality. But this one is Junkyard Joe number three. Really interesting story so far. This is part of the Unnamed universe, which um, is like this series of different miniseries, all written by Jeff Johns, right, uh, that follow different, like like unnamed heroes across American history, I guess. So the first one was set in the far future in like 2050 or something like that. Um, and that was Geiger. That was what set off this whole thing. But now we're going back to like the 80s uh, or might have been the 70s. It's a story about the Vietnam War um, and this soldier that came across Junkyard Joe, who's this robotic soldier that the U.S. deployed to see, you know, test out in the Vietnam War, see what he would do. But since then, this soldier has retired the the last issue was set like 20 years after the first one and he's been making this comic strip about Junkyard Joe since then but now Junkyard Joe is uh visiting him again many years later even though the um the cartoonist thought that he was decommissioned so really interesting premise I'm liking it so far uh and I'm just not really knowing what they're going to do with the rest of the series we've got these neighbors that um you know, the cartoonist is being kind of grumpy with so they're having to deal with moving in with him uh, I guess maybe the neighbors will have some part to play in this. I really don't know what to expect because that first issue was self-contained. The second one kind of set up what's going on now. So uh, we'll see what happens with the future of this series. I think it's going to be six issues maybe, if not longer. So we'll see. That's Junkyard Joe, issue number three. The last single issue that I picked up from Image Comics, though, this is a $3 one. Of course, it's a Spawn's Universe title. This is Gunslinger, number 15. They're, keep they're still keeping uh, Spawn under the title. They're just going with Gunslinger alone. Pretty cool cover here. You can always count on Spawn's Universe for having good covers. I don't, um, I don't have much to say about this series, to be honest. I feel like it hasn't been um, too exciting the last few issues. Like, you can really know what to expect from this series at this point. It's mostly Gunslinger, like, going around, interrogating people, sometimes, like, torturing people. Like, he was strapping this guy to the back of a horse and having it take off last issue. So pretty gnarly stuff sometimes in this series. Uh, and it's all depicted in a really detailed manner by Brett Booth. As you can see, he's got... A very detailed art style, a lot like Todd McFarlane's art in the original Spawn title back in the 90s. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm getting a little bit tired of it, to be honest. Like, Gunslinger is still enjoyable. Just a fun superhero book, and you can't expect anything too serious from it. It's not um, breaking any boundaries of the comics industry or anything. It's just a lot of fun. Um, it looks like we got a new character in here. This might be a first appearance, so... Maybe a spoiler there. Sorry about that if it is. But yeah, Gunslinger, this is number 15. I'm still enjoying this title, but yeah, not much to expect from this, like, in general, I'd say. 
Finally, though, I did want to show you guys this trade paperback that I picked up. I got it with my store credit, so this is for free. Uh, it's a series that I've been reading in trade paperback format since the beginning. This is the Department of Truth, uh, Volume 4, The Ministry of Lies. So you guys all know what Department of Truth is. It's been around a while, but basically... Um, you know, it's the Department of Truth. It's this organization, this secret organization that's part of the U.S. government. Their job is to keep conspiracy theories from becoming true. Because in this Department of Truth world, uh, if enough people believe in some sort of conspiracy theory, it can become true. So we've had a bunch of different little story arcs exploring different ones, you know, like the moon landing, Bigfoot, stuff like that. Uh, I'll show some of the interior artwork here. It's a very uh, unique comic, I'll say that much. From like the writing style to the art style, um, and then... Not so much in here, but there's definitely a lot of like long text bubbles and different formats that you wouldn't normally expect from a comic that James Tiny and the writer experiments with a lot. There's more going on. I know it's been a while since I've actually read volume three. Um, and to be honest, it kind of seems like a good series to pick up in single issues because each issue is usually pretty meaty. You get like a lot of story and a lot of dialogue and stuff. But I always really enjoy reading this when new trade paperbacks come out, volume four. Uh, and I wonder how long they're going to go with this, because it's been going for, what, this is collecting issues 18 through 22. So it's been going a while. We'll see what their plan is for publishing new issues and how long this is going to end up going. But that's the Department of Truth, volume four. That's about it, though, for my new comics haul. I want to know what you guys are excited about this week. Which issues did you pick up? Which was your favorite if you already read them? Let me know all that down in the comment section below. Uh, that's about it, though. I do appreciate you guys watching. And if you do want to show a little bit more support to the channel, you can also hit the subscribe button. Down below, we're getting closer and closer to that 500 subscriber milestone. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.